So get in your car and drive at 80 kilometers an hour. Now on this graph, after one hour, you've traveled 80 kilometers. After two hours, 160. And after three hours, 240. And four, 320. And five, 400. We can draw a straight line starting at the origin, because at time zero, you traveled zero kilometers. And we get a nice straight line here. This is an example of direct proportion. Now mathematically, we can say that the distance traveled is directly proportional to the time that you've been traveling. Now if two things are directly proportional, we know that the uh, thing will be equal to kt. And k is some number that t is being multiplied by. In this particular case, the number 80. We call this k here the constant of proportionality. So a very brief uh, example of this idea in action. If Q is directly proportional to P, so I'm going to stop there. Q is directly proportional to P. Therefore, Q is equal to KP, where K is some constant of proportionality. All right, let's keep going. Q equals 30 when P equals 90. All right, if I know what... Q um, Q and P are at a single moment, I can calculate the constant of proportionality. So Q equals 30 K times 90. Okay, so that means that K is equal to 30 over 90. K is equal to one third. So now I have a rule connecting P and Q. I know, therefore, Q equals one third P. And now it's relatively straightforward. Calculate Q when P equals 360. So Q equals one third of 360. Q equals 120. Now that is direct proportion and the constant of proportionality in action. But when it comes to direct proportion, it doesn't have to be a straight line. So what would it mean if m is directly proportional to the square root of n? Well, we just write mathematically what we're reading. m is directly proportional to, directly proportional to, the square root of n, the square root of n. And then we can write that as m equals the constant of proportionality root n. Now that we've got a formula, let me give you a bit more information and we can do something with it. So part two of our question says, calculate k and fill in the table below. All right, so we've got this table. We know that when m equals 9, n equals 1.5. And as long as we have m and n, we can then calculate k. So if m equals 9, k root 1.5, which means that k is going to be equal to 9 divided by root 1.5. Now you could leave k in that value. You could type that into your calculator and your calculator would actually simplify it a little bit and tell you that k is equal to 3 root 6. You could also get to 3 root 6 without your calculator, but it does take a little bit of mucking around. Something like that. It relies on you knowing a little bit about thirds and then rationalizing a denominator. But in any case, I know now that k is equal to 3 root 6. So now that I know that, I have a formula. I know that m equals, sorry about that, 3 root 6 uh, times root n. Okay, so remember what we were doing. We had this formula and we were trying to find out what k is. Now that we know what k is, we can put it in there m equals 3 root 6 times root n. From here, we just sub in m values and we get n values out. Now, because we're trying to find n values, it's probably easier if we rearrange this a little bit. So if I do m divided by 3 root 6 equals root n, and then if I do n equals the square of m 3 root 6, um, like that. I can then sub in those m values directly into that formula, put 5 in for m, put 7 in for m, put 14 in for m, and I'll get all my n values that I need. Now when you sub those values in, you get 25 over 54, 59 over 54, and 98 over 27. 
Now, there is another way you can do it rather than putting values into that formula each time. You can just um, sketch that formula. So replace the N with Y, replace the M with X, sketch that formula, and then do a bunch of calculations on the graph on your graphics calculator. Either way, it works. Come and talk to me about your graphics calculator if you'd like to see how to do that. Everything I've talked about is direct proportion, but to talk about indirect proportion, we've got to dig a hole. So if you ask one person to dig a hole, it's going to take him one hour. But what if he had a friend to help? Well, it would take them half the time, right? So two people would only take half an hour. But what if two more people came? Well, if two more people came, it's going to take half the time again. It's going to take this long. And just to drive home the point, what if four more people came? It's going to take half the time again. And what we get is this thing that looks like this. And it's always going to take some time to dig a hole, even if you had like a million people. So we're getting closer and closer and closer to time zero without ever touching. It's asymptotic. This is an example of indirect proportion, and here's how we write it. In the case here, we say that t is indirectly proportional to the number of people. t is indirectly proportional to the number of people. Now, when we write that in an equation, we still get our constant of proportionality. We get t equals k over p. And then if we sub in any of these values, we can figure out what k is. Now, this is a very simple example, and you'll see why. Let me choose a, a point here. Uh, let's say uh, one person, one hour. So 1k over 1. We can see that the constant of proportionality here is 1. So t equals 1 over p. And we can see that if we sub in the number 2 here, let's say, t equals 1 over 2. That means that the time is going to take half an hour. If we sub in four people, it's going to take a quarter of an hour, which is what our graph is showing here. Before I forget, indirect proportion is the word I'm using, but a lot of people use the word inverse proportion, and they would say that these are inversely proportional to each other. So you might get a question like this, f is inversely proportional to the square of r. So let's just write that formula first. f is inversely proportional to the square of r. f is in inversely proportional to r squared. Now we know that that's going to be f is equal to k over r squared. Let's keep reading the question. f equals 50 when r equals 3. All right, f equals 50, k when r equals 3, uh, 3 squared. All right, so 3 squared is 9. We want to know what k is, so we need to do 9 times 50. 9 times 50 will equal k. So k equals 450. Therefore, we know that f equals 450 divided by r squared. And then the last part of the question says, calculate f when r equals 12. f equals 450 divided by 12 squared calculator. And we get an answer of 25 over 8. Now, you didn't have to use a calculator there. Squaring 12, 144, and then simplify the fraction just by finding common factors. But our answer for f here is 25 over 8. All right, that is direct and indirect or inverse proportion.